I was at this one uh, test that we had that uh, I was on the trainer seat for the five inch uh, cannon that we had on the fantail. And uh, I was turned away from it and, and with our back to the, to the detonation and uh, with our hands over eyes as we were told it's the only protection we had. And uh, we were uh, uh, at the point of detonation well, uh, it was a matter of something like seven and a half seconds or something like that. It was all in that ballpark. And then it, it hit, and it hit awful hard. And it knocked me clear out of the trainer seat down onto the turret. And I rolled off of that down onto the deck and uh, skidded me up a little bit. But I'm bad. Go. I was a sailor. I jumped up and shook it off. I believe that it was un the underwater test that broke the seam in the hull of the ship, and I didn't get to see that particular uh, detonation, but I did uh, uh, feel the consequences of it, in which uh, at the point of uh, detonation, well, it threw me over the two uh, after steering columns. It threw me clear over there. I lost my, I lost my uh, earphones, and I had no control of myself at all. And they said, someone said, well, let's, there it is right over there, just starting out with just a little bit of a mound. And if you look close enough, at the right place at the right time, you would see it. And then it started picking up, building up. The mound started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then all at once, that mound would kind of leave the water. And then it would have a huge, big shaft come up from that, just pulling everything up from the bottom. And, it, and then it would go, go up and up and up and up and up. And, and, uh, but I have never seen anything so more beautiful in my life as so many of the different oranges, the yellows, the purples, the greens, the colors all in that whole, in that whole thing, it was there. And I don't know, I thought to myself afterwards, I said, I wonder if Michelangelo could paint such a picture. But it was the most deadly thing that, that I or anybody else on board that ship had ever witnessed in their lives. I was in the Navy uh, during Operation Ivy. Our ship was assigned to escort duty when the uh, ship carrying the atomic weapon uh, came out from the west coast. And we picked it up at Pearl Harbor and escorted it to Anawetok and then performed uh, security patrols around the Anawetok area. Uh, we were patrolling the lagoon and the entrances to the lagoon for that, uh, for uh, the possibility of foreign vessels, foreign submarines, uh, anything that, that might be looking over our shoulders when we were looking at the bomb. There were four ships in, the squ in our squadron. We were the uh, primary anti-submarine, one of the primary anti-submarine vessels. And we did have what we thought was an intruder. At one time, they did track it for some time, but they never were able to resolve actually what it was, whether it was a whale or some, something else. And we did go to um, general quarters because we were prepared to attack if necessary, if we couldn't bring it to the surface in, in, a, in a peaceful manner because we were, that was part of our duties. Everybody was creating these ideas that uh, hydrogen is supposed to be one of the most stable elements in the world, you know, type of thing. And he says, well, if they can make this thing go off, what's gonna keep the rest of the world from going off at the same time? And uh, we found out that it didn't happen, <laughs> fortunately, because we were awful close to it if they were going to blow up the whole world.
a crew member on an RB-36. It was a reconnaissance bomber version of the B-36. Instead of having four bomb bays, it had two. And the forward bomb bay was converted to a photo department. We were airborne for, well, the entire trip, about 30 hours. And uh, we started very early in the previous evening or so. And we went eastward as far as Texas. And we're measuring winds aloft from Texas all the way into Nevada. And then we rendezvoused um, probably western New Mexico or Western Arizona or New Mexico in that corner somewhere and then ran on the uh, the, the site of the drop in uh, New er, Nevada. You'd line up on a on a bomber run. Um, it's like you're running on a target. You'd have a series of checkpoints, and you'd and uh, they would take measurements as far as drift and things like that to make sure you put the bomb where it was supposed to be. Uh, the 10B36s were deployed um, two groups of five in what we referred to as a bomber stream, fire airplanes in a row on each side, 500 foot above each other, and I was in the left rear position at 43,500 feet. And the B-50 came up from Walker or Kirtland or one of the bases in the southwest there, and he had the atom bomb on board. We made a dummy run and came around, all 11 of us, and then back and made a final run. Then he was he dropped a bomb at, on that run. We were all, at least in the command part of the intercom system on the airplane, could listen to other aircraft, and, uh, and including the guy on the B-50 dropping the bomb. And he identified himself as the Playboy. That was his code name. And to tell us that he was going to run, where he's going to drop the bomb, he identified it as I'm the Playboy, and I'm on the graveyard run. And this time, they were going to drop the bomb. And like it happened a couple minutes ago, I remember him saying, um, I'm the Playboy on the graveyard run. Nine, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Son of a bitch! The bomb didn't go out of the airplane. I don't know, it got hung up mechanically or some damn thing. And, uh, of course, we all looked at one another. And, uh, you know, like, it's like somebody turned all the engines off. Like, you know, we were just in complete suspension. Like, what was going to happen? Well, he, he pulled it, and it went manually, I guess like a salvo. Obviously, didn't go where it was supposed to go. Instead of blowing up like 1,000 or 1,200 feet, it blew up quite a few thousand feet above that. So we were a little closer to it than they had counted on. I got to the blister, and I looked down, and the bomb was cloudless in its initial formation. It looked like a giant orange basketball. It kept getting bigger and bigger. Then the clouds started to go up from it. 